Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, everyone hear me? Hear me? Okay, great. Um, my name is Juhal Instead, and thank you so much for inviting me here. And let's start by having a quick poll. So, how many of you are using some ki some kind of framework or view library? Okay, almost all of you. Great. So, how many of you know how that UV library work under the hood? Raise your hands. Not that many. Okay, great. So, that's the main question today. I'm going to show you how they work by creating one from scratch. Right here, right now. <laughs> In some, where around 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> So what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> yeah, and it's all based on my own view library called Freezer, which you can find from frzr.js.org. Yeah, you can go and see it. It's here. Okay, so without further ado, let's start. So. Um, I have set up this uh, really simple uh, bootstrap here. I have only the HTML code here. I have head, which has uh, reference to this CSS uh, file. And then I have body, which only has two, two uh, references to JavaScript files, so lib.js and main.js. And all those are empty, as you can see. So we are really starting from scratch here. So. First, uh, let's study quickly how HTML elements are created in a just plain JavaScript. So let's create some elements here. So we are using document.createElement, and we provide some tag name here, and then add some another element. Okay. And then we are going to set some attributes, like class, set it to title, and then some properties, like text content, which is going to be the uh, name of my talk. And lastly, we will append those to the body, uh, like this. and h1 the header so here we go let's put it big, bigger okay and as we can see we have a header which has h1 which has class title and text content is minimum viable view library okay uh, next let's see how we can make all this a bit easier so we are using this l helper function which will create html elements and the syntax will be quite a lot of like hyperscript so uh, I will write my name here and then we will create another element inside the h2 uh, which will have href property which will link to my website and then it, it will have a target uh, uh, property uh, which will be blank and inside of this a tag there will be uh, the address of my uh, web page. And lastly, let's mount this to the body. Of course, this doesn't work yet because we haven't created these um, functions yet. So let's do that. First, let's create the element uh, helper uh, create uh, element uh, creation helper function. So it's called L. And first, it will create the element using the same document that dot create element we used previously and we will provide the tag name here after that we will loop through the rest of the arguments uh, provided here so starting from one because the tag name is number zero so basically in AS6 this would mean something like this so with every argument, we will um, uh, try to mount it 
using this mount function. And if it works, we do nothing. Continue. And if it doesn't work, we try uh, check that if it's an object. If it is, we assume that we are uh, wanting to create some attributes or properties to that element. So in that case, we will loop through the attributes. And we are checking that if the property of, uh, I mean, the element property of that attribute is truthy, that case we can use those straight away. In other cases, we we need to use set attribute. This is a small trick to you know figure out whether those are properties or attributes. And lastly, we will just return that element. So let's see what happens. Oh, I forgot to create this mount function. So one function we will take parent and a child. And first, we will uh, check that if the uh, child's type is, for example, a string or a number or boolean. In that case, we will like to mount a text node. So we are creating a text node. Uh, for that child, and actually let's do it like this. If the child is already a HTML element, and in this case we are using Node because it includes also the comments and SVG elements and all that, so we can't just uh, use HTML elements. So if it's already a Node, we can mount it straight away by using append child. And if it's something else, we return false because it's not mountable. But in every other case, we return true. So let's see what happens now. Yeah, it works. So now we can really easily create HTML elements here. We have H2 uh, node here, which has my name, which is a text node. And then we have H, uh, A node which has all these attributes and properties and even the text node inside. So let's move on. Next, we will create some items. Uh, we'll create this array. <coughs> Actually, let's add uh, a title here about me. And let's mount that to the body as well. Yep. And we'll create some items here. I started with Flash in 1999. I uh, work with small businesses and advertising agencies. I've been entrepreneur since 2006 and I work as a lead developer of I did digital signage ID.fi, if you want to go and see. <laughs> and let's map these items. So we will return a uh, new U for every item. So we will create that component in a second, but let's return new, new LI and let's put the item there. And then we will create a unordered list which will have those items inside. So let's create first that uh, list component. So we input the data and we will create a list element and put the text inside of it. So we are using this.l. So our components are just basic JavaScript functions, which are constructors and which return just a simple object which have at least the L property. So that's our component. And to get our components work, 
we need to change this mount function so that we will accept uh, components, uh, HTML elements which are inside that L property, or if they are already HTML elements, we can use them straight away. And we do, do the same thing with parent.l. And we need to change those here as well. Like so. Parent as well. Okay, it should work. And because we are using an array here, uh, the items array, we need to also uh, check that if we input uh, array here, we loop through it and mount all uh, components inside of that array. So let's do that. Mount parent L and child L and I inside of it. So let's see what happens. Nothing great. Okay. Oh, I forgot to mount the on order at least to the body. So I hope it's that. It's not. Great. Oh, great. Thank you so much. I buy you a beer in the next place. Who was it? <laughs> great. <laughs> if I, okay. Make more typos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's hope so. I don't promise anything. <laughs> Okay, now it works, great, woohoo. So, we have a list. And then, what if we would like to uh, reverse that list after one second? Let's do that. So, we are using this set children, and let's uh, also reverse that uh, items array, and let's create this set children function. So. Basically, it, it will only take the parent and an array of children. And again, we will need to make sure that we support also the components and the HTML elements. So we do this trick once again. And then we start to basically uh, traverse through all the current children, if there's any by starting from the first child. And when we go through all the children, we want uh, to be included here. I, I, I <laughs> yeah, I had the length here, so great. <laughs> no more beers, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, okay. And when we go through every children, we will also check that it, uh, we support the components. And then we check that uh, with every children, if it's already on the target we are putting it, we do nothing because it's already on place, except that we go, uh, go to the next sibling. In other cases, we will mount the child uh, before the current element, or if there's none, the traverse will gonna be undefined. So uh, the mount function will only get parent L and child L. And let's put the before here. And what happens here is if it's set, so if it's not undefined, we will use insert before uh, and not append child. So before L and again we will need to make sure it's a component. Now it should work. Another thing here is that if we have any children left uh, and we have already put all the new children there uh, we remove all the rest of the elements by looping through the traverse wh while it's there 
and getting the next sibling and then removing that child from the parent. And lastly, we will set Traverse to the next sibling. The reason we are taking the next sibling first is that after we have removed it from its parent, it's not there anymore, so we cannot uh, call the next sibling. So that, that's why we are setting the next here and then removing and then setting the Traverse back to next. Uh, let's see. Okay, and it works. Great. So when I refresh the page, we will see that all those list elements will get reversed. So it works greatly. Okay, and then uh, what about if we have a list of components and if we fetch some data from the backend and we want to keep that list updated with that data coming in. So when we have new elements coming in, we want to create a new view. When some data items have been removed, we want to remove those components. Or if some, those, some of those components have reordered, uh, we, we need to reorder uh, DOM. How can we deal all these situations? So let's create a bit more complex component. So we are creating this element, which has a class called card, and we will add some image inside of it, and this name, uh, which we are going to be just a paragraph here. And you will probably wonder why I'm using this really confusing syntax, but it's really just valid JavaScript. What I'm doing here is I'm setting these as function arguments, but I'm also saving the references here. Because uh, now, um, if you compare this to the vanilla JS uh, approach, we are using uh, this flat um, syntax here, so it's really hard to see which is inside of which. So we are setting the references here first, and then we are setting attributes and properties, and then we are appending these, and it's really hard to see which is inside of which. So here, we are creating elements, we are setting references, and we are also setting the attributes and properties all in this quite nice syntax. This is almost like a JSX, but to uh, JavaScript, and also we are setting the references, which is not common in uh, JSX. And next, we will define that how should we update this component by setting uh, this update function which will basically just uh, uh, use these data to set some properties uh, to these elements. So we will set the image width, height, source, and we will set the uh, names text content. Here we go, and I forgot the source. Okay, and now um, let's create that, um, actually let's create a container first here, cards, and let's create some data, like 50 images, and we loop through the data. And with every data, we will set the image to have some width, uh, height, and some source. And width is going to be a random number between 75 and 150, and height also. And we are using this image placeholder API called Unsplash, which will only take those widths and hexs and return us a nice photo. So we put them here. And then we will need the name tag, also image number i plus one. Okay, 
So we have the data. And let's also create that list. And as a first argument, we are using this card component. So we are creating a list of cards. And we will append that list inside of this cards container. So first, let's add support for the list here inside the mount function. So if the child elements is instance of list, uh, we will save a parent property for the list itself, which uh, 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 is this parent. And then we will mount uh, uh, the lists use to the parent. This is how it works. And then we need to create that list function. How that works is that we provide a component or u here, and we save a reference to it. And we will also create this use array. And to update that list, we get that reference to the view and we get the reference to the use. And then we loop through the data. And first we are checking that if there's already a U in place, if there is, uh, we are reusing it. But if there's not, we will create one. So we are creating it by using new U. And in every case, we check that if a U has an update function, we will update the U. And lastly, we will set children of uh, the parent to be the use. And we will need to check that if there's parent defined. Okay, let's see what happens. It doesn't work. I know why it doesn't work. <laughs> because I forgot to mount the cards to the body. Okay. And Actually, it doesn't work yet. Let's see, why is that? Mm. Yep. Uh, Sorry. Oh, great. But it wasn't that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no beer. <laughs> oh, that's the thing. Great. Was it the same guy? <laughs> great, you're paying attention here. <laughs> So I forgot to update the data. Woo, now it works. OK, so let's update the CSS a bit so you can see what's happening. So let's first change the font family, which is really important. And we'll also set the background color. And then we'll really fast uh, style these cards using inline block and vertical R in middle. Then some margin, then some padding, and background color, and box shadow. These are really important. I want this to look pretty. <laughs> so here we go. Oh, and one more thing. I want to use text align center so the text is in place. OK, so we have a list of cards. Great. Let's do one more thing. What if why I wanted to update the list in every second uh, so that uh, 
I will randomize it by returning math dot random minus dot five. And now uh, I forgot to yeah update the list. So I actually need to sort the data and update the list with the data. Okay. So now in every second we are randomizing the list and also I want to slice the data with a random number from 25 to 50 and actually I forgot one more thing here inside the update function I need to set the use length to be the same as the data length so uh, the rest of the items will be removed so now what's happening here is that uh, every second we are inserting elements, removing them, but not reordering elements. So I will create one more uh, thing here. So to reorder these, we will use a ID parameter here, ID property here uh, in data, and we will provide that key to the list, uh, which is ID, and inside this lib, uh, a list function we will provide the key here and if it's set we will uh, save the reference to it and we will also create a lookup which will gonna be an object and here when we are updating it uh, we will check that if the key is set uh, we will get the loopback lookup as an old lookup because we are creating a new one in every round uh, which parameter ah oh, okay uh, oh oh actually I added it to the wrong place sorry okay uh, so yeah, uh, we are looping to the data and the same thing we did before, but this time we will take also the uh, ID uh, from the key, uh, with the key we provided, and then we choose the old U from the lookup, old lookup actually, with that ID. And if the U is not there, uh, we will create it once again like we did here below but in every round we will set the U and we will set it to the new lookup here and also we will update the U if the update function is set and also uh, we are using the same set children we have here already I hope this will work. So let's see if I've got something. I don't think so. Okay, let's see what happens. So we have ID set here and still it works. So I can prove you really quickly by console logging this.name.textContent and data.name. So let's see what will up get printed here. So actually it doesn't work. I forgot something. Sorry about this. Oh, and I know. We will need to set the lookup uh, to be this new lookup in every round. So now it works. Great. So what we can see here is that uh, even though the components will change place, always the data will be the same. So the current name is image 37 and then it's image 37. If we remove the ID here from the definition, we will see that uh, image 80 would be image, image 47 and, and like that. So we are re reusing these components with index. But if we set the ID here, we are reordering them in the DOM. So it works same as like Angular's uh, track by, which is in ng repeat. 
or for example in react we can use the key property there so now we have this uv library which does almost anything that angular or react and <laughs> Well, except, of course, the templating and JSX and stuff like that. But if you think about this, uh, this will only take now something like two kilobytes, even before minification. And another benefit is that we know exactly how this works. If there's any bugs there, we, we know where it is. And stack traces are really small. And actually, I can show you that the performance is really great. If I request animation frame here, we can see that it runs actually in really high speed <laughs> and I forgot to remove those that console log. So let's do that so it won't crash my computer. Yep, of course. You mean the... Yeah, let's see if I can remove the console log first, because, <laughs> yeah, it's here. So I removed that. Yes, I can enable the rendering settings here. We have the FPS, which is running not that high. Why is that? Maybe it's because the images have not yet loaded. I'm usually getting 60 frames per second. Uh, so. Well, maybe that was because the console log was there. Let's try again, because this is not that common. Yeah, I don't know. OK, I don't know. but. Uh, I can show you really quickly what the performance is by comparing it to the other uh, libraries. For example, here we have React 15.0. Uh, and if we rever uh, reverse 10,000 items, it will take 150, uh, 170 milliseconds. Then we have uh, older React, it will take 462 milliseconds. And then we have, for example, Riot. Uh, Let's see how long that will take. If we re reverse the list, it will take quite a long time. And it's really crazy because Riot is actually using the same reorder sc uh, script I'm using here, uh, the set children. That's because I wrote it. <laughs> so the reason Riot takes so long is that it just uh, does all kinds of scripting. I don't know what it does, but yeah. Uh, freezer here takes 117 uh, seven, uh, milliseconds. So it's even faster than the newest React. So yeah, the performance is quite great. So do you have some other questions? <laughs> yep. How long did you practice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this took me somewhere, I, I can't remember, two years maybe, three years. <laughs> Uh, that's because uh, when I started, uh, I started with ri when the Riot 2.0 came in, and I wrote a reorder script for that, and then we enhanced it over time. And when I realized that it's still slow, and I, I um, realized that my algorithm is quite fast, so I wanted to create my own library just to prove that the algorithm works. <laughs> So that's what inspired me. <laughs> yeah, do you have other questions? Maybe in the after party? Yeah, maybe in the after party. One okay, go ahead. Uh, sorry? <laughs> well, if you think about it, that uh, I just told you in 30 minutes how this all works. So. You can just go ahead and copy and paste these and use these, and you know it's not that hard to use. So um, I don't know. <laughs> I I will definitely support it because I'm I'm creating two really large applications with this, and I'm definitely going to 
using that I'm really close to approaching uh, version 1.0, so I won't be changing this that much. So yeah, I will be supporting this. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you.